Hey everyone, MC Angela back on your screen and your speakers one more time. And welcome to another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I speak with a brother coming out of California. His name, Elliot Popkin. Check out this interview we did right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? MC Andrew Love, back on your screen and your speakers one more time with another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I'm speaking with this beautiful singer. I'm talking about this dude here has a voice of a male angel. If you don't believe me, wait till you hear his song that we're going to play later on the show. In his name, Elliot Popkin. So without further ado, let's bring in Elliot Popkin. Hey, pleasure to be here. Yes. So what have you been up to? Well, uh, just hard at work at music. My new song, Running, comes out June 3rd. The new song writing comes out June 3rd. Yes. And you sent us a snippet of it. So we're going to hear it later on in the show. I can't yes. wait to hear what it sounds like. Because that one song you have, I heard on Spotify, Fighter. Yep. That's that jam, man. Thank you. Uh, when did you realize you had a passion for music? Probably I was six years old. Yeah, I, um, I'm someone that had... Unfortunately, a pretty challenging childhood. Uh, I grew up in a home that was, uh, my father was an addict and uh, there was a lot of physical abuse. And so for me, music was such a complete escape. I would leave the house and just be by myself and sing for hours and hours. I can relate, man. Music is like a therapy. Yes. Who are some of your greatest influences? I think my mom was growing up. Uh, she's someone, she uh, had cancer. And she passed when I was 15. I just remember her, I mean, to use the word, she was such a fighter. All she really wanted to do was have this opportunity to experience life and see her children grow. And so personally, she's by far, I would say, my biggest inspiration. And musically, I've always been really attracted to other singer-songwriters, people like James Taylor, Tracy Chapman, India Ari, uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter, people like that. That just storytellers. You just mentioned a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah. <laughs> those those people are like geniuses in the business. They, they I agree. are legends. And I agree. one of one of my mother's favorite artists is Tracy Chapman. Mm. Yeah. And so she had her records on vinyl. Uh, remember Fast Car. Mm. Yes. So if you're when you're not in the studio and you're not creating music at the moment, what do you usually do? I try to stay really active. Uh, I'm pretty involved in my church and I exercise a lot. That kind of gives me just balance and finding that Zen, you know, the industry can be challenging. And so for me to just do anything outside of work that just keeps me connected to nature and stress free, anything like that. Your type of music is more folk or easy listening, as I would call it. Yeah. Do you find it? Well, see, I'm familiar with a lot of hip hop artists. And they tell me all their horror stories in the industry. Mm -hmm. Do you find you go through the same situation in your in your genre of music as, as say, an R&B artist would? Well, I can't speak on directly what their experience with challenges is. But, yeah, I do think that's something a lot of artists go through early on in my career. I felt like they just kept trying to put me into a box. Can you just be more pop like John Mayer? Can you just lose weight? Can you just do this, do that? And I just felt like the only direction I was given was to be something other than me. And so I think to embrace the music that I've always wanted to do without trying to fit into anyone else's box, I think that's what has been really a sign of freedom for me was to just be the best Elliot that I can be. We got your song running. Um, I want to talk about that. Yes. Can you tell us about the song? Give us a backstory. Of yes, indeed. So running is really about, um, the lyric is running from a broken heart. So when you first listen, you have this idea, um, and I think you'll hear it in a moment, that the person hops on a train. They don't know where they're going to go. They know they just need to leave the situation that they're in. They're not happy. And sometimes in life, we don't 
often in life. We don't know what the next step is going to be. We don't know what it's supposed to look like, but we know we want to change and we know we want to be better. We know we want to elevate ourselves in life. And so that's what running is really about. The song takes the listener through this journey of this person on a train and the stop numbers keep coming and they don't know where they are. And then they realize one of the lyrics in the chorus uh, in the bridge is, can somebody please stop time? Sometimes in life, we feel like we're just going and going and going and something has to knock sense into us that like, I'm not happy doing what I was doing. So I need to have a fresh start and just reassess life. And that's really what the song's about. Well, without further ado, I'm going to play a snippet of the song Running from Elliot Popkin. <laughs> Stop 63. Wow. This time I won't forget to breathe. Stop 85. I can't wait to feel. It's Elliot Popkin, yo. It's that dude. Alive. Whoa! What? Oh my God, that's amazing. Get, get this guy pulls your heartstrings, everybody. You want to hear the rest of the song, you gotta wait till it comes out. Yeah, but you can also tap in Elliot Popkin with his other songs. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, YouTube Music, Pandora, and my favorite place, iHeartRadio. You can find Elliot Popkin there in all streaming platforms because if there's streaming going on, Elliot Popkin is right in the middle of it. Tell us some of your experiences that you've had since you've been in the industry. Oh, gosh. How much time do we have? No. Um, so I ended up going to Berkeley College of Music, which is in Boston, Mass., right where I'm from. And I studied songwriting there. I had such an incredible time there. I felt like it was the first moment in life where I really felt like I was home, that I was just surrounded by all this creativity and other amazing writers. And I really loved it. And then after I graduated, I spent about a year writing songs. And I released my first album when I lived in Massachusetts and I toured New England. And then I just had this feeling that I wanted to go to a music town and I chose, um, I chose Los Angeles. I was supposed to be here for four days, rehearse with a band. And then uh, my manager had booked me on a tour of the United States and I got here and I found out very quickly, my manager didn't book a tour. There wasn't one date booked. I had two bags of clothes and no place to stay. And so I stayed on my friend's couch and I had fired the manager in about two weeks. And then I got hit by a drunk driver right on Sunset Boulevard and um, hit and run. And then uh, I chased after the car, I ran after it, and I got the license plate. I was just so embarrassed. I, I was like, I can't go home. I didn't, I didn't come here to just leave. And so it began like this long process of just trying to find people in the industry that I vibed with and building connections and still writing. Eventually, I got to my second album called Endless Ride and uh, got to tour the country and had a few music videos on TV. And it was all very exciting. I think because of the things from my childhood that I never really dealt with, it was very hard for me to trust people. It was hard for me to, I sabotaged a lot of opportunities early on. I don't think I was the easiest person to work with because I don't think I was happy. So eventually, uh, my songs found their way into commercials and TV shows, and I started writing for other artists. And then here I am all these years later, getting yet another shot, and it feels incredible. The response I got from Fighter was so encouraging. And I'm just very happy to be here. I'm very humble, too. Yeah, I saw what's going on with Fighter, and I'm like, whoa, this dude's got a quarter of a million spins on yeah. Spotify. That's amazing. Because that song, though, I must be honest, is a theme song for a lot of people that are down and out. And that song brings you back up and makes mm. you want to keep going. Like a person that may be negative and down on himself. Here's a song fighter. He's not remembering why he's so down on himself because he hears the story in the song and he's like, oh, oh, what have I been thinking all this time? I'm not a victim. I can fight for this. Right. And, and uh, I, I love your music, man. It's really, it's really comforting, soothing, and reassuring, and mentally as well. It's a big up. I really like it. And anybody else, you listen to his music, you're going to say the same thing. Matter of fact, 
this is what you're going to say. Damn, MC Angela, you did it again. You told me to go find an artist named Elliot Popkin. We go find him. And guess what? He's dope like you said he was. Yeah, exactly. So go get Elliot Popkin. Go tap in. Put his songs on your playlist. Do whatever you have to do, but make sure you press play. Because this brother here is serious. Do you have any advice for the youngins that are coming up that want to do what you're doing? Oh, my gosh, I do. Um, can I just add, since what you were saying about Fighter, and you just asked the question about the music industry, that's why I wrote it. I wanted the industry to know that I'm still here. You know, I definitely have learned a lot now, but I'm not going to stop until I get to say what I wanted to say as an artist. Um, but yeah, as far as to, to newer or younger artists, I would absolutely, I hope I can save someone 10, 15 years right now to just be the best version of yourself that you can be, especially in this industry. But I think in life, all we want to do is look at someone and compartmentalize their talent, put them in a box. Like, well, you have to be this. And I've heard that I'm, I'm not a, uh, pop enough to be a pop artist. I'm not traditional enough to be a folk artist. And I just realized at one point that it's just noise and it's distracting. And I'm just trying to make the best art that I can make. I'm not trying to be another artist. And I think if a younger artist can truly embrace that and just be the best version of them that they can be. And really, I think that's a wonderful idea in life too, to just be the best person that you can be. You don't have to be the best person that someone else expects of you because first of all, that doesn't work and that's not authentic happiness. And I think as a musical artist, that's exactly what I would say to people. Like you concentrate on being the best you that you can be. What is your process when you're going to the studio and you're going to make a song? Do you make the song before you go to the studio or do you have a, already a production in your head and you meet with a producer at the studio and you're right from scratch? What is your process? Great question. So my process actually varies. Sometimes I get a lot of ideas when I'm in motion. So if I'm driving or if I'm running, that's when I tend to think of ideas. So if my friends see me like grab my phone, it looks like I'm just on the phone with someone, but I'm recording a voice memo to myself so I don't forget it. Sometimes though, some of my best songs and I've thought I'm thinking of a few in particular with one of my main collaborators, the guy who wrote Fighter and the new song Running, his name is Elijah Jamal. He's an amazing artist and an amazing writer. So a lot of thanks to him. And most of the time in my head, I, I feel like I specialize in melody and lyrics. So I'll think of an idea of both melody and lyric in my head. And then depending on who I'm collaborating with. One time though, I just wrote out all these lyrics and I handed it to Elijah and he wrote a song and I have to say, it's probably one of our best songs ever. That's not our normal writing process ever. It's more collaborative. Um, the other thing I would say that might be different from me, from other people is I write very fast. I feel like songs are like photographs. I tend to write each song within about two hours. And I just, I want the ideas to flow and I don't like editing uh, myself too much. But um, yeah, from what I've heard from other people, you know, they'll just, songs can take, weeks and months and for me i just feel like at that point you're writing a whole nother song but that's my process that's really cool do you have any burning desires burning desires yeah i did think with this next album i have a list of people that i'd love to write with that i've always wanted to work with people like i mentioned a few of them james taylor tracy chapman mary chip and carpenter i've always wanted to write a song with babyface paula cole india re there's all these people that i want to work with I think we would write amazing songs together. So I think for me as a songwriter, I'm always thinking of how can I challenge myself and how can I grow more? And if I were in a room with those people, I definitely, I think that would be amazing. Well, you keep singing the way you're singing and that burning desire might happen sooner than you could say, look at these split. America, look at these split. <laughs> America is I am Andrew Love. This is Les Chat and Jam. And this is my special guest, Elliot Bobkin. Really, really tremendous, talented artist. And I recommend his music to anybody that's going through some things, especially if you're going through a lot of mental challenges. Elliot Popkin's music can turn your life around just by listening to his positive lyrics. This man here has music for the people. And I really believe it. So if you want to go and listen to a song that's going to help you turn around your life, 
Elliot Popkins, that guy I recommend to everybody, not just old people, young people alike. Everybody can get a piece of something when they listen to an Elliot Popkins song. So, Elliot, where can people find you? Yeah, so um, all the songs are on iTunes. Uh, the new song, Running, isn't released on all platforms till June 3rd, but it is available today as a pre-release on iTunes. So they could hear it there. And I think every other song is pretty much on Spotify. And then the other platforms you mentioned, my main website is just my name, elliotpopkin.com. I'm excited to get to, um, I miss performing and I miss touring. So the thought that I can finally get to do that again, that's really exciting to me. Yeah, I can't wait to see you perform live in concert myself. I think you might do a throwdown concert. Do you play all the instruments too? No. I, uh, when I perform, I'm just singing. I, I, most of the people I collaborate with, they've been playing instruments since they were three, four years old. So I, uh, I learned a long time ago to not compete with that level of magnificence. So, yeah, when I write and then when I perform, I'm, I'm, I'm just singing. I think of concerts kind of like just a few hundred or a few thousand people in a living room. I try to keep it very just chill and zen. It's just all about a positive vibe. Well, I hope when you do go on concert, you won't forget. Oh, MC Andrew Love, let me shoot him a ticket real quick so you can come on to the show. Yeah, I really want to see what you do in person because I like your music. And I'm sure it's more intense when you get in the actual setting of what you bring to the table. Could look forward to it, actually. Well, since you've been here for the first time, you have now become part of a Let's Chat and Jam fan, which means you don't have to wait for me to hit you up to invite you to the show. You can actually DM me and say, hey, Drew, can you uh, get me on there? I got something to talk about. I have some things I want to promote and all that good stuff. And I'm going to get you on my calendar and I'm going to say, deal, let's get you on. But Elliot Popkin, it's been a pleasure having you on my show. I enjoyed meeting you. You're a really amazing, talented artist. I can't wait to see you in person and see what you can do. And I can't wait for running to come out. So make sure everybody gets their hands down and their clickers ready because when running comes out you need to break uh, the internet for that song so thank you for coming through I appreciate it you be safe out there where you're at and everybody else you be safe just remember when you want to do something and it's worthwhile go ahead and do it if you have a dream take put one foot forward and just go ahead and make it happen Peace out, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. Also, like and share the content as well as hit the notification icon so you don't miss any A Conversation With series right here on Let's Chat and Jam.